Yeah, okay, guys. Sorry, the engine's running. Uh, I'm just letting it run for a little while. Scrub is assembled. Let's put this bad boy in here. Then I brought the tools home. Let's see if we can get this uh, tire right end out. Let's see how much we get. Okay, she's in. Okay, like I said, this is still coming back apart so I could do that axle boot. I'm not doing that here in the driveway. Um, I wish I could leave this tire running and just do it at work, but I can't. I already straightened it and welded it. And this is damaged. Once I cracked it free, it started to spin in the novel. So, not a big deal. I got an inner one. I don't have the outer one. I gotta go in there, cut the clamp, and go in there with the tool. If we cut the wheel all the way to the right, this should all come out. Let's give that a try. Okay, guys, we went in there. We spread the clamp, which makes it still reusable with the right tools. No pair of dikes if you can get your hand up in there. Okay, there's the rack. Okay, we want to keep this clean. Here's the inner tie rod end right here. The way Mitsu does is does it is the inner tire right end has a male stud obviously the rack is female there's a washer on here with a tang so it can spin you put the washer there put a little dot of loctite on here tighten it down bend the two things over and you're good to go okay uh, one of the two shortcomings is definitely the tie rod ends so this is the second tie rod end in the car this tie rod end is meant other than the bend and break so basically we've got a tool like this it's gonna slip on the two flat areas nice and tight okay and we're gonna hook that to this we're gonna spin this to the side and put the tool in and put it there to lock it now we're gonna just take off the outer tire on end we're gonna slip this over and put a half inch breaker bar on it and crack it free Let's see what we got. If I had my good pair of channel locks, I could break that free with the channel locks. So, very rarely do I ever use this tool. Or have I used the tool? Just on a Mitsu. All wheel drive makes it a little tighter, which this is. But let's do it this way. Okay, from the face of this nut to the back side of there, I took a measurement of 11 3 quarters. Will that be exact? Absolutely not. Okay, we'll be close enough that I can move this car around and get it to work. Absolutely. So you can see what I had to do there that day to make this car functional. It's nice, the wheel looks like it's straight up and down. I think we're going to be on the money. So, okay, let's get it past that. There you go. Nice and dry inside. That's what you want to see. There. Put that in there like that. Okay, now we're going to take this collar piece that fell off. Okay, I don't know where I'm pointing the camera. We're going to put this collar piece in there. Okay, we're going to put the slot of the tool in there and lock it. I'm not a good cameraman when I'm not using one hand. There you go. Let's put the breaker bar on there and break it free. Uh, I don't know. I have absolutely positively no place to prop you guys. Yes, the car is on jack stands and a jack. Are you looking at what I'm doing? I don't have a clue in the world, guys. So. This is where I see amateurs getting into trouble using amateur tools. Okay, once you break it free, switch over to the ratchet. Basically, now the only thing I should be fighting, fighting is the lock type.
always have to come off. Can I just spinning it? Oops, you can see the Loctite on the threads. You can see, well, there was tangs on here. If the tangs are gone, and then the bend over, and the flat spots. So, it's going to be washer. There's the damage to the tie rod end. The outer tie rod end, as I was spinning this, the bottom pole was going in and out. So this shaft has a bend in it. Maybe we'll dissect that. Like I said, two weeks old. But what are you gonna do? Um, another thing that's gonna happen, this bearing is gonna go bad. Uh, I've noticed it a lot, not just on Mitsus, but any car that gets hit in the wheel. It seems like the bearing makes it a month from the impact and the little roll is digging into the races. It makes it about a month and starts to growl. Uh, should I be doing it right this second? Sure. Am I gonna? No. We're making this car drivable so I can get it to work again. I, I can do this like a profession. <laughs> That's what we're, we're gonna be doing. Throw it on the alignment machine. I think it's gonna be dead on. Uh, this wheel straight up and down now. Uh, like I said, there's no damage to the top of the strut towel. If you remember, the hood didn't shift. The gap didn't change on the other side or this side. Um, it looks like the weak link was right here. And she got hit right in the other part of the wheel by a Land Cruiser. So, yeah. Uh, this damage is fixable. Her damage isn't, unfortunately, guys. She is suffering from permanent back damage. So, sad to say. Neck and back. Uh, well, because a kid, from what it appears, was arguing with his mother in the morning. And he came around a turn. I'll be doing 40 or 50 and slid. I went right into her. She got pushed up against the curb. She was just sitting there, waiting to go. So that sucks. Bad phone call. So what we're going to do with that is we are going to take this boot, okay? And we are going to slip this boot back on. Okay. Which it appears like it is on. There you go. It's on. It's locked on. So, do I want to put something in that hole? I probably will. My luck, a mouse will move in there. But it's protected. It's under the web. This tire is going on as of now. So I'm not going to leave it jacked up like this. Um, I'm going to order this tire on end. And I'm going to check to make sure the end of the tire on ends are correct. I ordered them over two years ago now. And uh, I had made the purchase from Rock Auto. And I've had very bad luck with Rock Auto shit. And the tire on ends had grease on them. So either somebody didn't need them or they're wrong. So I'm going to figure that all out now. But with that, I'm going to put this tire back on. We've made good progress. I'm going to pick myself up a tranny cooler. Get that in now. Um, I'm not worried about the fender shield until after we paint the side. So, but I'll find one and get it. But I'm not putting it in now. Then uh, this thing will go to work. We'll cut the rotors, give it a full wheel alignment, a hole going through front to back again. So, bring it up to snuff. And uh, good thing is it flies right up. So, when I came out, it just starts up on the click now that I changed the gas. The gas was the key. Ex extensive crank, ex excessive cranking. But when I fly it, I fly it smooth. So what that tells you guys, if anybody doesn't know, the when you fire up a car, there's a predetermined set of uh, parameters, like what your timing is, uh, how many milliseconds for the injectors, okay? Because it, it knows it's 70 degrees outside. I'll just pick a number, and it goes for that. And if you have gas that's gone bad, it doesn't fire right. So it's still it's still putting the initial thing in it, and then it'll slowly compensate to get it to fire. And then the car will run fine. Your uh, fuel trims will be off, but as long as they stay within parameters, you won't kick a light, and you won't notice anything driving. So if the gas is slightly bad, you might not notice it. Uh, we get cars in all the time that they put E85 in a regular car. Oof, does that wreak havoc for the customer? 
because it's not like you're doing it in your backyard, guys. These customers have to pay to have this fuel removed or taken away. And there's a, there's a nice charge for that. So, yeah, they learn. They learn. Um, with that said, I'm going to click the key. Let's see if it fires. Phone call. I'll just leave the camera right there. Find the keys. any Mitchell will ever start. So, you can hear it's still cold. So with that guys, let's uh, put this tire on, put this thing back down on the ground, and uh, next time we're out here, it'll probably be another week. Meanwhile, we'll be working on the Concord. Uh, we got high build, we got epoxy, we got everything to make this thing into one color so we can move to the next phase. Unfortunately, we're going to jump back and forth a little bit to get this thing on the road, so. Okay, guys, here's the replacement part. This is an actual factory part. So you can see the raw differences. But they're the same length, same thread. Same here, same there. Okay. Oh, good. I got two of these. Moog. So it even comes with Loctite for in here, which the factory doesn't put, and one of these jam nuts. And that's it. So you say to yourself, good, it comes with a jam nut. The thread could be different. No, the thread better be the same. So we're good, we just gotta load up some out of time run ends. I'm gonna go order some now. I need one for my Corolla too. So I'll go order one for this and one for the Corolla. I don't think the other one failed sitting there. So we're good. Okay, nice start. I'm gonna see if I get that washer from Mitsu. I fold over washer. There you go guys. A little positive camber. Mitsu runs positive in the front, negative in the rear. That's why these things handle like a beast. So, say what you want. I'll put this up against a, a Monday Toyota and Nissan any day of the week. And I'll handle it. I drive them every day. <laughs> <laughs>